For decades, American director Rob Cohen has been the go-to guy to make Hollywood's biggest blockbusters. He is the creator and director of the Fast and the Furious franchise and has also made other hits such as Triple X, The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, and Dragon, The Bruce Lee Story. Cohen is in town for the Beijing International Film Festival where all eight of the Fast and Furious movies will be screened. Just last week, the latest installment, The Fate of the Furious, claimed the biggest worldwide box office opening of all time, a whopping 500 132.5 million U.S. dollars. I had the chance to sit down with the man responsible for creating what is arguably the most successful movie franchise today. Here's part one of my interview with Rob Cohen. Hi, Rob. You're here in Beijing. Hi. You created and directed the first Fast and Furious movie. Now all eight are going to be screened at the Beijing International Film Festival. Now this is arguably the biggest franchise of all time and it's been smashing box office records along the way. So as its creator, looking back at it all, how does that make you feel? Well, it makes me both surprised and very grateful and very proud of the job we did on the first one. Because without the first one hitting such a deep chord in the public, there wouldn't be the other five or six. So, uh, but there's also that wonder of like, you know, I was making a small movie for spring break. Nobody believed in it. Nobody at Universal believed in it. You know, it was just, oh, he's just going to give us a kids and car movie for spring break. And I had a different mindset about what I was creating and just went after it relentlessly. And I honestly never dreamed that it would do this well. It just has surpassed any, any fantasy I could have had. And this is pretty epic. The Fate of the Furious just broke a huge box office record worldwide, beating out even Star Wars, uh, I think The Force Awakens. Right. Fast and the Furious, this movie is about souped up cars, heists, the street racing subculture. How did you come up with the idea for this film? Did you just wake up one morning with this need for speed? <laughs> well, I, it, was, it came from a, a, an, a, an article in Vibe magazine about, it was really about kids street racing in Queens, New York. And uh, there was something about its multicultural aspect that this was being participated in by Asians, by whites, by blacks, by Hispanics, and every other combination that got my antenna up. Because, first of all, you didn't know anything about it. I mean, public didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about it. I had to work hard to get into an underground street race. And when I did, I saw the whole world. And in that opening scene where Paul Walker goes to the conclave there and challenges Dominic and th we have the four car drag race. That is exactly my experience the night I was taken underground out to San Fernando Road and watched the gangs, the, the different cars, the betting going on and the watching for the cops, the whole, the whole thing. And the minute I saw it, I went, this is amazing. Right. This has got to be a, a great movie. Now, I also read on Twitter yesterday that over the course of the first Fast and the Furious movies, the first seven movies, that the cost in damage totaled 500 million U.S. dollars. Does that figure sound about right to you? Um, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> okay. I could see that. You know, these cars are very expensive, and even when you're reproducing them, where you're taking a skin off the real car and making it out of fiberglass and doing, putting it on a different chassis and so on, you know, you're still talking two, three hundred thousand dollars a car, and you know, you smash them up like tiddlywinks. You know, it's just part of what the story is about is the the consequences of speed and and also, you know, in the later sequels the. Uh, various ways that you can cleverly destroy all sorts of cars. To me that's a surprising figure, 500 million US dollars, because 
I think, like most viewers would assume, when you see these crazy car chases, death-defying stunts, you think, how is that humanly possible? So there's an assumption that CGI, post-production special effects, plays a huge role in that. So how has, like, technology today changed your role as a director? Well, it's made it more complex, but it's also made it any vision you have in your head more possible. I, I for one, have gone against visual effects now. Now that I've done so much of it, I also wonder if the audience isn't just about fed up with it. Because CG, you know, it can get very close, but like it's never... Like uncanny valley effect yeah, type of thing? it's not 100%, whereas reality is 100%. And I've enjoyed now, and I did a lot of that in Triple X too. We did all those stunts for real, except him, Benny, out, out snowboarding an avalanche, which could not be done. That was visual effects. But most of the stuff was real. And speaking of Triple X, you teamed up with Vin Diesel again after your 2001 film, Fast and the Furious. And Triple X also became a huge box office franchise hit with its third installment this year featuring Donnie Yen and Chris Wu. Obviously, a very successful opening here right. in China as right. well. Wherever I go, I, <clears throat> I absorb things that go in here somewhere, and one day, something comes out, right, where you go, ah, yeah, you know? And you start working on it because you sense you're onto something. That's what happened with Fast. That's what happened with Triple X. I kept thinking, we got to do an, an American James Bond. I mean, it's ridiculous that this foppish guy with the tuxedo, and we're not in that era anymore. Nobody thinks that's sophisticated. The guy shaking nuts, stirred, you know, and all this. It's all great, don't get me wrong. But you're talking about an audience today that's tattooed and, you know, got nose rings and crap. They don't care about the erudite, suave British guy. So I said, what we need is a tattooed, pierced, <laughs> mofo, you know. <laughs> I, I mean, Vin. Right. <laughs> and he became your muse. <laughs> and, and, we, right. and we put it together, and okay. uh, it, it became another thing, a milestone in my career. And, I think another thing much beloved by the public. So why do you think American action films appeal so much to the Chinese audience? Well, I think it's because it comes directly out of the, 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 a very long Chinese tradition in terms of spectacle and in terms of taking war, which has been a big theme in the whole long history of China and moving it into a non-war subject. So if you think about an action movie, you've got this army of Vin and The Rock, and this one and that one, and then you've got the other army of Jason Statham and so on and so on. And the movie is really about these two armies clashing. They're not a cast of thousands and thousands, like in a war movie, but it's the same idea. And are you planning to work with Vin Diesel again or do more action movies? Well, we talk about it. We were going to do a remake of Roadhouse together, but MGM kind of backed away from it. And, uh, uh, you know, he wanted me to direct Fast 8, but, you know, it just it wasn't the right thing and for me, and it wasn't the right thing for the studio. and. You know, so it just, it, it didn't work out. But the fact that he wanted me was very meaningful, and uh, I always appreciate that. So I keep looking for a way for us to reteam, and uh, I think I could help him, and it would be lovely to have him back with his wind and my sails, too.